When it comes to alternative or green technologies, turbines are not only used in wind power. The power of the tides can be harnessed to generate electricity using the latest innovations in tidal turbines. Andrew Scott is the CEO of tidal energy company Orbital Marine. They have developed a unique floating platform which is moored in a powerful tidal stream off the Orkney coast. Underwater rotors capture energy from the tide, sending it via subsea cables to the local electricity grid. So Orbital Marine Power is a, a predominantly an engineering company and what we're focused on is trying to develop a, a technology that can harness the clean predictable power that comes from the phenomenon which are tidal streams. Tidal power is quite an interesting phenomenon, um, not least because it's not driven by the weather. It's driven by the gravitational effects of the moon and the sun that basically pull and stretch the oceans and seas around the world. And what that means is we've got vast quantities of water that are moving around our coastlines. And where they become constricted or channeled around headlands or between islands, they start to become accelerated. And they become like very deep, fast flowing rivers. That's what we call tidal streams. And that's the specific energy source that we're focused on trying to harness with turbines. Tidal stream energy is one of many, many sources of renewable energy that we've got. Now tides, we can predict them with a really high degree of accuracy. So we can tell you how much energy we can produce over a period of time, and we can tell you how much energy we'll be producing at any particular time. So they bring a, a special complementary, what we would call is a complementary effect to a future energy system. The United Kingdom is an archipelago of islands. It's surrounded by ocean and sea, and we have this very dense source of renewable power that predictably flows around the coastline. Harnessing it absolutely um, adds to energy security or improves energy security because nobody can stop that. Um, it's in our territorial waters. So um, that is one of the great benefits of renewable power is that nobody really owns it. It's free. What are the challenges of working in this industry? In a tidal stream site, you can't really use divers. So people can't get down to the seabed and back because the water doesn't stop moving enough. It's too, it's too hazardous. The unique thing that Orbital Marine Power has done has been rather than construct that like a wind turbine at the bottom of the sea, our technology actually floats. We have a floating superstructure that floats on top of the ocean and it has legs, two legs, that come down underneath it where we have the turbines with their blades harnessing the fast flowing currents. And the clever innovative bit is that when we need to do maintenance on these, we can lift them up to the surface of the water so that technicians can get easy access to them. The further you get away from the seabed, the faster and smoother the current becomes and therefore the better the energy is. So by being floating, we're actually closer to and putting our rotors and our turbines in the best part of the energy source. Our turbines look quite similar in some ways to a wind turbine. We're using propellers or rotors to create lift and, and turn a shaft that we can turn that into electricity. That's fairly straightforward. That's quite conventional in some ways. Um, but obviously we're doing it in tidal streams where the water is over 800 times the density of air. So the energy is far, far more focused. It means our turbines, uh, to generate the same amount of power, can be a lot smaller. Uh, our turbine, uh, the O2, has got an ability to generate up to two megawatts of power. But across a whole year, the turbine will generate enough power to meet the demands of over 2,000 UK homes from just a single turbine. What skills and qualifications do you need to get into the field of tidal energy? I think the main skill sets that we really encourage and look for are problem solving and having the courage to problem solve. Um, at the end of the day, we're an innovative company that's creating new pioneering 
technological solutions. Uh, and that means we have to try new things. And we try and have an environment that encourages people to improve things, to fix things, to see problems ahead of them happening and create solutions. Two main career paths to get into a business like Orbital Marine Power would be a university, a degree level subject and certainly all of our engineers have gone from school where they probably specialised in science and maths to engineering at university, whether that's mechanical or electrical or hydrodynamic engineering. Um, the other path would be uh, more of a, an apprentice style role where after leaving school you might pick up an apprenticeship for uh, becoming an electrician or uh, a mechanical technician and these are jobs that are very much taught on, on the job, on the practical solution of uh, problem solving and building things. What are the future possibilities for these kinds of turbines around the UK? Where we actually see tides get concentrated into speeds fast enough to use our turbines are actually quite geographically script. So it's not everywhere. We've got big channels, you know, north of Scotland, where you could get large amounts of turbines, and then there's some smaller sites. So it's, it's kind of discrete little pockets around the coastline, mainly on the no north, west, Welsh, and south coast. So it wouldn't work necessarily you know, ideally, you'd say, I want it very close to all the big cities. So I want some near Liverpool and Manchester and some near yeah, London. Yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of the nature of renewables in a way. They exist where nature creates them. And tides are a bit of a geographic um, quirk. And then further around the world. Absolutely, yes. So there are tide sites, strong sites all around the world. Places like east coast of Canada, um, Alaska, uh, and then Southeast Asia has got a lot of tides around Indonesia. So, and if we look forward, let's say 20 years, what percentage of our power would you like to see generated by these technologies? And, and how would we get to that point? One of the nice things about tidal stream energy, it's very, very predictable. So we can predict a long way out into the future. So we think there's gonna be a strong demand for it as we reduce the cost. Some studies can indicate maybe up to 10% of current UK electricity demand could come from tidal stream. Um, but we'll see. We'll try and make as good an effort as possible. Well, Andrew, thank you very much. No problem at all. You're welcome. <laughs>